Hello everyone and welcome back to another week's episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. In this week's video, what I am going to be covering is a topic that actually, believe it or not, I don't think I've covered at all in the full, what, two years I've been making uh, videos for you guys. So it's going to be a great topic I think a lot of you guys are going to enjoy. Um, it's going to be a topic I'd kind of recommend to your medium, uh, you know, to your middle, to higher end uh, reefer. Um, you know, as far as the beginners, you can kind of start thinking about it, and I'm going to share with you why I, you know, I don't want you guys to pay too much attention to it if you are a new reefer. Um, before we do get into it, guys, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my tank has actually been moved. It's no longer um, where where it was. Um, I don't know if you guys know the whole story, but my wife and I were having a, our home built. I mean, it probably won't be ready to till another six, seven months. Uh, so we had to move into this condo here in the meantime, um, obviously to buy time. And yeah, so I had to move the tank. Believe it or not, I know a lot of you guys are wondering, did you record it? And sadly, I did not record it uh, for various reasons. I don't know if you guys have ever moved a tank, but it's really frustrating. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was to worry about, uh, you know, having the cameras placed and so on. Uh, luckily, my neighbor was able to come through. He really helped me out and uh, made the whole move really easy. So, aside from that, um, I'm, I probably will have a video a little bit later uh, talking about how the move went, what I recommend, uh, what I would do different. Luckily, we only lost about two corals, so it wasn't that bad. So, enough chatting about that. I think it's time... Actually, you know what, before we continue that, I almost forgot, but I have another topic I'm going to be talking about, uh, green hair algae. I, by complete accident, figured something out uh, that I think is going to really blow you guys away uh, when it comes to green hair algae. Uh, I think the same is going to apply to any other algae, um, but... Like I said, we're going to save uh, those two topics for another video down the road. Um, just kind of want to put it out there so also I make a mental note uh, to cover that. But what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to jump right into it this week. So in this week's episode, what we are going to be covering is pH. You guys heard right, pH. It's something that's uh, not talked about very much. Um, you know, you can find... Uh, stuff about it. Uh, you can find the benefits, you know, what's good, what's bad, uh, so on and so forth. But it's not something that's brought up very much. You see a lot of people, um, you know, especially on social media, on videos and so on, they're almost always chasing lighting, they're chasing flow, uh, they're t chasing alkalinity, calcium, uh, magnesium, phosphates, nitrates. Uh, but one thing you very seldom hear about is pH. So one thing I do want to say as far as a disclaimer, I would not tackle this animal, we're going to call it, we're going to call pH an animal, <laughs> but I wouldn't tackle this animal unless your tank is stable, uh, your calcium, alkalinity, magnesium are stable, they're not constantly fluctuating. Last thing I want you to do is me introduce you about pH and you really start uh, chasing those numbers. So um, that's just, again, a disclaimer. Um, obviously, if your main parameters are in line and they've been in line for months on end, um, you know, go ahead if you really want to take it to the next level um, and you're more than welcome to obviously uh, use this video to inspire you, do some more research um, about pH. So pH, generally in the reefing community, the desirable numbers that are pretty acceptable are 7.8 up to 8.3. I mean, I've seen guys run them as low as 7.7, .7, uh, but generally speaking, you know, 7.8 up to 8.3 is a pretty common one. And one thing you are going to find uh, in reef tanks, and I've said this so many times, you've probably heard this time and time again, Corals, generally speaking, care more about stability. They don't care about the physical number or the number you're trying to aim for. They care a lot more about you maintaining that number, whatever it is. If it's 7.8, if it's 7.9, if it's 8, 
8.1, 8.2, 8.3. The last thing corals want is you one day to shoot for 8.3, the next day it drops, and you're just not able to maintain it. And the same applies for alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, lighting, flow. I mean, one thing I try to tell people, anytime you watch either my videos or any other video, you read something, don't go and jump on the bandwagon immediately. Even if they are correct, don't do it. Why? Because corals like gradual change. They don't like sudden change. Uh, they love stability. So if you are going to start changing something, do it over time. And this is as simple as just your feeding regimen. Um, but anyways, uh, going back to the topic. So generally speaking, 7.8 is typically considered low. Um, 8.3 is a number that's considered very good and pretty high and something a lot of people strive uh, to achieve. Uh, there has been quite a bit of research done out there. Um, BRS has great videos if you guys haven't checked it out where they did various, uh, not only videos, but various tests on running a high pH. In their tanks, they found that higher pHs, 8.3, led to quicker growth, more calcification, and all in all, just better, bigger, happier corals. I think one of the biggest complaints you find in the reefing uh, hobby is people say it takes too long. You know, corals take forever to grow. One way to speed that up is running a higher pH. Again, shooting for an 8.3. So typically when it comes to higher pH, um, like I mentioned already, uh, 8.3 or somewhere around, you're going to notice a lot quicker growth. You're going to notice more encrusting on the coral. Um, not necessarily as far as coloration, although you will get good coloration. I think good coloration comes, one, with good lighting, and two, with stability. Um, pH, I think, you know, although it probably does affect some coloration, um, I think it affects growth a lot quicker. Um, and you can go really scientific with it. Um, as far as the hydrogen and so on and so forth, but I don't want to confuse you guys. I don't want to jump that much into it. Um, we just, you know, I kind of just want to leave it at that and kind of skim the surface. Uh, one thing you also will notice with running higher pHs, because I've kind of tested this theory out a little bit. <clears throat> with higher pHs, your alkalinity consumption actually goes quicker. So where let's say at 7.8 your corals are consuming just to throw it out there 10 milliliters a day at 8.3 you may be consuming 20 25 30 milliliters a day um, and kind of since we're on this topic uh, consumption of alkalinity is a great way to tell you if your thing if your tank is thriving and if you're doing the right thing because generally speaking your consumption should over time increase why because your corals are growing so as they grow, they're grabbing more elements out of the water. Um, alkalinity being one of the main base root elements, you know, should go up over time. That's one of the key uh, pointers telling you your corals are doing pretty good. So I know a lot of you guys are out there watching this video and you're probably saying, so Antonio, how in the heck do I increase pH? What can I do to increase my pH? Well, there's a few things out there. Um, and again, if you're going to do something, take it slow, do your research. Um, make sure you understand it. Uh, but generally speaking, refugiums will increase pH. So if you have a refugium, great. You probably aren't having issues with pH, generally speaking, uh, just because the gas exchange, the CO2 exchange, so on and so forth. Um, but generally speaking, if you got a refugium, you probably have a generally good pH. If you don't have a refugium, you're thinking of adding one. Aside from the other benefits, obviously, that come with it, uh, this is a great one to obviously kind of incentivize you to add one. Um, another very easy one, uh, generally speaking, the reason we have pH issues in our homes is because we're not getting fresh air in their home. There's too many humans, too many animals uh, consuming the oxygen, thus depleting the oxygen, more carbon, um, and obviously you lower the, uh, the pH in the reef tank. So opening windows throughout the day, um, another I've seen people run their input to the skimmers from an outside window or they'll drill a hole in the wall. I know a lot of people aren't going to want to do that, uh, but those two are very uh, common ones. So another really good one is using uh, soda ash base two parts. So soda base or soda ash base two parts will also help you increase your pH. 
um, one of the very, very common ones, uh, Kalkwasser. So Kalkwasser replenishes calcium alkalinity um, all in one solution and it's a great way to also increase your pH because the Kalkwasser solution, when it's fully saturated, has a very, very, very high pH. Um, another great one and a very simple one is surface agitation. So you're probably saying, how can I do that? Very simple. Either point your nozzles toward the top, try to run uh, whatever wave maker you're running towards the top or point it toward the top to get more surface agitation. This is going to increase gas exchange, thus um, increasing your pH. Uh, one of the last ones that, believe it or not, if I ever did, I'd probably consider doing is a CO2 scrubber feeding into your skimmer. Uh, so a CO2 scrubber um, is something I haven't done much research on, but I kind of get the glimpse of it of how it works. Uh, pretty much you connect uh, that running into your input line for your air on the skimmer, um, and that in itself will obviously uh, increase the pH. Um, and I think one of the easiest ones it will be in my scenario would one be with uh, surface agitation, the CO2 scrubber, uh, and you know just better ventilation throughout the day try your best to open the homes um, you know those are pretty good uh, ways of doing it right now the way my tank is uh, it pretty much runs at about an 8 to 8.1 um, that's even after adding the calcium reactor I know a lot of people say if you add a calcium reactor you're gonna have uh, pH issues believe it or not guys I've had no issues with the pH it has not changed whatsoever af after adding it I don't know if it's because I'm not uh, dosing it that much or I don't know it's because I'm running the dual chamber which was actually planned and is a way to increase your pH uh, coming from outside the calcium reactor uh, but either way I haven't had any issues once adding it um, and again my tank does maintain about an 8.1 so I think if I really wanted to increase it um, probably adding the CO2 scrubber to the skimmer or obviously the calc washer would be a great way uh, to increase the pH. So I'm going to leave this video here guys. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you run your pH at and what you believe is a good pH number for growth. So guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed it very much because again I hadn't done um, anything on this topic probably because my tank really hasn't had issues with pH. It again maintains about 8 to 8.1 um, but yeah, guys, I'd love uh, what you guys have to say, what you run, what you recommend uh, for all those newer reefers or intermediate reefers out there maybe watching these videos, reading those comments. Uh, let me know what you use, what method works best for you, or which method you recommend uh, for people that are having issues uh, with pH. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. For you guys in SoCal that are t attending Reef of Palooza, California, I will be there next week. For you guys that aren't going to be there, I'm obviously going to be covering the whole event for everyone so you guys can stay home, enjoy yourself, stay with your family, but you still get to experience the event. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.